Oh, hi there, everyone. My name is Chris, and welcome to Amelia Earhart. This is all about Amelia Earhart and what she went through, and this is about her strange disappearance. I want to dig into Amelia Earhart just a little bit more with Let's dig in. See, Amelia Earhart was born July 24th, 1897. She grew up in Acton, Kansas. She grew up having a lot of great jobs out there. She was a nurse. So one day she was at an air show and she went to her air show, her first air show, and she was so stunned by the flying and the stunt flying of other pilots out there that her, it grasped her attention. And she was just like, this is what I've got to do. So she went on to get her pilot's license trained. And not only that, after she trained, she started flying full time. She flew one of her planes called the Canary. Not only that, she's one of the most famous aviators in history. On July 2nd, 1937, Amelia Earhart and her navigator Fred Noonan disappeared over the Pacific Ocean, never to be seen or heard from again. In her career, she had a long list of incredible achievements, like the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean and setting a world record for altitude in 1931, where she flew over 18,415 feet. Her plan for the globe was set for 1947 was planning to be her very last flight which claims she as we know it was her last flight not in the way any of us wanted it to be her trip around the world was not her first attempt that came three months before her disappearance in 1937 when she set off and something went wrong with her plane fred newton and amelia were accompanied by a pilot, Paul Matz, their navigator, Harry Manning, who was the best radio operator of them all, and Fred Noonan and Amelia Earhart were not good with radios. The first attempt was supposed to go smoothly from east to west around the globe, but they ran into difficulty from Hawaii to Howland Island in the Pacific Ocean. The attempt was swiftly abandoned. Fred Noonan and Amelia Earhart parted ways with the two, Manton and Manning. The second attempt was when stuff went wrong, when they decided to go at it both by themselves, Fred Noonan and Amelia Earhart in a di different direction from west to east, successfully completed their first leg across the U.S. from Oakland to Miami. From there, they executed successful flight after successful flight that was going very awesome and very good for making plans at stop-offs across the Atlantic Ocean and Africa and Asia before landing in New Guinea after a month that they left on June 29th at a time when long distance flying was still new Amelia Earhart's flying was still groundbreaking Fred and Amelia had three flights left to complete their flight around the world one to Helen Island one from there to Hawaii and then from Hawaii to California they were just days away from home when tragedy struck. They did depart for Howland Island, but they never arrived, vanishing somewhere forever over the Pacific Ocean. Everybody tried to guess or claim to know what happened of Amelia and Fred's disappearance of today still is a guess just because people have speculated that they know what has happened to Amelia's plane or even Fred Noonan and it's still debated by millions today. A crucial aspect is the communication between Amelia Earhart's plane, the Electra, between her Electra and the Itasca, a US guard ship, were apparently were. The ship tried to reach the Electra by using Morse code. There was barely any radio use on the Electra just to have room so they could have a lot more fuel and use it for fuel and weight. The Atasco was filled with a lot of comm equipment between the uh, 
Electra and the US pretty much delayed and it was hard to pick up the Electra, which is Amelia's plane. She really couldn't hear. After Amelia's disappearance, there were a lot of speculations about the radio issues that they had. That they had a lot of communications failure. People speculate that Amelia reached her destination, but the plane ran out of gas. The other is, since she was running f low on fuel, she just sat down and nobody could find her on the island that she was on. Also, on her last message at 843 on July 2nd, she was very panicked. There were a lot of confusion in those final hours. They were confident that her heart was nearby. Basically, she flew over where she was supposed to land and they were scanning the skies but her plane never appeared on the horizon. But when she failed to show, everybody searched for her, costing a lot of money, over $4 million. They say it was really expensive, but her search was a fail. It included multiple ships and costs $250,000 a day, but yield at nothing. Some other theories that what happened People think that Amelia and Fred crashed into the Pacific Ocean to where her plane sank all the way down to the bottom. Parts of the Electra were never found. Other parts are that she swam to the island that she was on with Fred and Fred was seriously hurt. So overall they had to ditch the Electra and swim to the island and they survived and people say that she landed on the Marshall Islands. Amelia Earhart, Fred Noonan were captured by Japan and they were sentenced to Japanese territory and people thought that they were US spies. Either ways, there were more theories. They say that Fred Noonan and Amelia Earhart were executed by the Japanese. Others think that they lived on the Marshall Islands for World War II before eventually returning to the United States and having brand new identities or living underneath that identity. Remember, Earhart's plane went down in 1937. Two years before the war broke out, four years before the attack on Pearl Harbor. The dates aren't a perfect fit for the capture theory. Plus, there is a, another theory that President Roosevelt sold Amelia Earhart out because she had equipment on board the Electra and basically since the Japanese found her, they were calling her and Fred Noonan spies, they were held captive. There's a photo that emerged that Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan on a dock on the Marshall Islands when they're safe and well, but that photo failed when basically a, another photographer published it somewhere else two years before the disappearance. People also think they found their ways to Nikki Mararo, the Pacific Gardner Island. People think that she flew over Gardner Island that a lot of people heard her transmissions. Human bones were found there on the islands in 1940. They think that Prairie of Fernalia that was found on uh, Amelia Earhart's plane. Some personal items too that she had. People think that the bones were hers and some people don't think the bones were hers and Fred's. Including the freckled little jar that was around her neck all the time. People think that was hers and not only that uh, a few things of uh, Fred Noonan's that people think they also found too. It goes back and forth, Fred and Amelia's, or it's somebody else that people think that they uh, have claimed that other people have been on the island. If her and Fred did end up as castaways on Gardner Island, people think that they also perished there. The Japanese have also claimed that living in the camp when Amelia Earhart came claimed to say that they saw her and Fred Noonan get killed by them. Also another rumor is, is that the Japanese did torch the Electra and people were kept silent in that camp, kept quiet. Everybody's been trying to go down deep to the seafloor to where they have not found the Electra or the Electra anywhere. 
So you have been watching this documentary for Amelia Earhart and Fred Newton. My real question to you is, is what do you think on what happened to Amelia Earhart out there? Drop your comments down in the section down below. So if you get the chance, everyone, please like, please subscribe, and with all due, hit that notification bell and like this video. My name is Chris, and you've been watching Top Global Media, and I hope to see you back here soon. So I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.